me so fast And I'm gonna take a trail in the world But I go, yeah Yeah, I'm gonna love you I'll give you all of what I've got Fancy fines, baby, I have not It's gonna love you Welcome to part two of our extensive Sea Wind 1260 review. Now, for those of you who know, we have been living on a 1260 for most of this season, and so this is a very different review to the one we did on Dockside in 2019. In part one, we discussed the saloon, we discussed the cockpit and the helm position. In part two, we're going to discuss that whole thing about galley up versus galley down, the cabins and other aspects of the boat that we found interesting. I hope you enjoy this. Please feel free to give us a like and a subscribe. Enjoy. So on the Seawind 1260, the port side hull is dedicated, if you have the three cabin version, as the owner's hull. So we'll take a walk down there and see what joys that brings. So the corridor between fore and aft in the port side hull, where you have the galley in the starboard hull, is dedicated to storage and plant equipment. On this side, so on the outward side, you have four very large cupboards. Now on this boat, it is used for just supplies this boat is in charter for most of the years but as i said on the previous 1260 video that we made in annapolis these shelves are glassed in so that's actually fiberglass they're not loose particle board shelves so it actually adds to stability of the boat so you have four big cupboards here um these are about i think probably about 10 to 12 inches deep um so there's a there's a sizable amount of storage in there Again, the, the, considering this boat is in charter and in pretty heavy use, you know, as I said, look, when you are looking at a boat, um, when you are looking at it either new or used, and this is just a tip, look at the up, the, the top edge of the cupboards in the galley for veneer split, because that is where you tend to get water ingress. So uh, under the sink, where you're gonna get water splashes, look for splits in the veneers. There are none here. Um, so the, the veneer here is, is pretty good. These cupboards are, as I said, they're plant equipment. So this is really taken up with um, the electronics and the um, circuit panels, switch panels. So probably couldn't use that. And again, in here, tool kits and the cushions for the day bed. So the, uh, everything does fold down to a day bed. And then coming through here is the master, the master, the master, master, <laughs> master cabin. So this is the master cabin on the Seawind 1260. Now a couple of things, I am five foot nine and the it does have a sloping roof. So as I get to this step, that's five foot nine. <laughs> um, you probably have probably six foot one, six foot two story of clearance there. So that's pretty good. So yeah, I think by na you know naturally the, the shorter of the two will be in this on you know on forward. Um, there's a step up to the beds. Again, it's not a problem for us, and the beds are wide enough. That's a full size, a full queen size bed. So it is pretty comfortable. The mattresses are also very comfortable. We've been sleeping on these beds for a while now. On this bed, there are there is one fan that has given us enough ventilation, and there is a big opening hatch above the bed. Um, lights and storage form the rest of this cabin. So underneath the bed, there are pretty sizable cupboards. Again, these are this, I don't think these ones are glassed in. No, those ones aren't glassed in. But you've got probably about eighteen inches back there. So that would perform. That would probably for us be linen. Um, your shoe collection and my shoe collection yes my my Louboutins <laughs> um moving forward another set of shelves these are glassed um again clothing and then you have under here just little bins that you can put things in and then forward you have a pretty sizable dry oh, lock. Wow, that is big yeah so you've got a pretty sizable dry locker and i, I haven't actually opened this one so where you're going to live when you mess around <laughs> So again, 
those shelves aren't glassed, but uh, that would give you a, a lot of storage in there. So storage, not really an issue for us um, if you're keeping the weight down. Now, I know I bang on about storage and boats a lot. There is nothing wrong with sto with having a lot of storage, but I think for us, um, you know, we would probably, we would need a little bit more to go remotely. And that's just for, you know, we just need different items. We can't stop in, you know, to the occasional supermarket every couple of weeks. Um, but as I said, we've been living on this boat for a while now and it's, it's, it's super comfortable. We sleep well at night. Um, there is no slap under the hull. We've had, we've seen this in, in many weather conditions and we've been anchored now for months. And I don't think we've ever been woken up by the water slapping on the hull. No, never. No, well, it happens in catamarans. So, um, niggles, let me pull this apart. Um, I think if you are, if you are kind of like, um, you suffer with mobility issues, um, then these steps up may form an issue for you. Uh, but I don't think that, you know, if you're able to sell, you know, a boat, then this shouldn't be an issue. Some people don't like climbing up to beds. I, I, I have no problem with it at all. I think it's a clever use of space. And something we've been asked before, can you sit up in bed and read? Yes, you can easily. You can sit up in bed and read. Um, because oh, it, on your side, you can. <laughs> well, on your side, you can as well. You sit up in bed and read, don't you? No, okay. don't know. I can't. Okay. Yes. So we'll just take a midpoint in the bed. <laughs> So yes, with Teresa's trusty Kindle, <laughs> this is, um, you know. Yeah, so not really sit up, more kind of recline. Like a Roman emperor. Yes. Like that. Yeah, that's fine. So it's not an issue? No. Yeah. <laughs> This is the aft heads of the C Win 1260. Now this because it's a three cabin version, so the masters are the master hull. It is a pretty large heads for us. Um, something which we have not had before is a large shower store, um, which is a joy, an absolute bloody joy. But you know, uh, electric toilets, these are saltwater flush, um, full height standing shower cubicle. Let me just get myself into here. Let's go. So there's a little step down here, but again at five foot nine, there's gonna be at least six foot of clearance here. And the shower head probably is only a couple of inches below that ceiling. So if you're six foot and under, you're not gonna have a problem showering. Handrails, there is a seat if you wanna shower at sea and it is rough. Um, sink, storage under there and storage under there and a large opening hatch and there are blinds here to preserve your modesty if that's what you want to do. Um, so yeah, it's the largest heads we've ever had to, um, you know, had to live with and, and we deal with it very well. So it's, it's pretty beautiful in here. Um, I think the 1370 is going to be a different, it's going to mm. be a different level of luxury, but overall it's, it's a step up from what we had. For sure. One thing you should notice is that there is the, the engine access uh, on the port side is through this this hatch so you have access to the engines there is not a lot of noise through these doors while underway we've been underway for a while there you have a holding tank you have the filtration system which is pretty easy to access also visually you can see it just by opening this door so if you had if you have any sort of contamination with water or with um uh, diesel bug or any sort of like problems with your diesel you'll see it a water heater here and then at the back you've got the rams for the autopilot um again it's it's an accessible space yeah i'd have no problem cleaning getting in here and just things that people do ask you know practically there is a light up here which is nice right so here we are little light and that light moves so again well done see when we're putting an articulating light in so the things that you would need to change at sea um, is normally your impeller. Your impeller is there, but so your water pump cover is there. And again, it drops into a bilge. So again, the things that really used to kind of like were, were fraught on Ruby Rose was that if you dropped one of the screws from the raw water pump, um, you had to fish around for it and it was difficult to find. 
this it would drop straight into that little bilge there which honestly it's it's so shallow you could just lay down and get it out one question that i would have which was an issue with ruby rose is that between the front of the raw water pump and this little bulkhead there's only about six inches so you would struggle to get an impeller puller in there um, so you would probably have to rely, as we did, on the screw that goes. This is a Yanmar engine that you'd have to get the the, the pulling screw from Yanmar. Uh, what else? So you've got filter, the um, air intake there, and the other thing is there's, a, there's, a, there's a, another fuel filter there. Also, the dipstick on this is really lovely and easy to access. So yeah, overall engine access is absolutely fine i don't have, i don't see any issue with this in the slightest <laughs> here we are aft of the galley so this is the aft cabin in the starboard hull is it a double probably at, at one end it's a double probably a three quarter at the other end i've definitely slept in smaller double berths but you know it's a light airy cabin we've got what have we got i don't know probably six foot one six foot two of headroom so you're not going to bang your head when you're getting undressed down here you've got a little bench seat which is lovely um opening hatch which is nice to get some air in here and two port lights on this side so there's actually a lot of light coming in it's really nice on the other side there are bedside reading lamps a fan and a hanging locker so Honestly, for a 41-foot boat, this isn't bad as a cabin. I'd, I'd be pretty happy with this on a, on a long passage. It's, you know, it's small and comfortable. And finally, internally, we find ourselves forward of the galley. So this is the forward guest cabin in the starboard hull. Now, this clearly is a full-size double. Interestingly, it's also <clears throat> it's fore and aft as opposed to the master cabin, which is a thwart ship. So if there are just two of you on board and you have a particular sea state that suits sleeping in one direction over the other, you can just switch cabins. So that's pretty clever. It's a quick hop up to the bed. Um, there is storage beneath these little bins here. Light switches, attachment points for USBs, fans. There is one opening hatch there, but two quite big port lights there. You've got storage, storage, so a lovely curved storage locker there, another storage locker there, and a hanging wardrobe here. Actually a pretty nice cabin. Again, what I keep banging on about is that for a 41-foot boat, this is actually fairly spacious, considering it's a performance cruiser. So yeah, this is the uh, the fore cabin, the forward uh, guest cabin in the starboard hull. And behind us, we've got the forward heads, which is, I think, what a realtor would say is compact. It, it fits into the kind of the V of the fore peak. And what you've got there is you've got, you've got a flushing electric toilet, some storage space, a hanging locker, and uh, a sink and a kind of pull out shower into a shower drain. So again, it's, it's pretty compact, but as, as living accommodation or crew accommodation or guest accommodation, you can close it all off. So with this door closed, you've got a fair amount of privacy and what should we say, an ensuite. So for a 41 foot boat, there's not a lot I can complain about. <laughs> Welcome to the galley on the Sea Wind 1260. And now we have had a lot of discussion, a lot of questions about this. What do we think of galley down versus galley up? As you know, there are very few catamarans that use the galley down. The Antares 44 is one, and the smaller Sea Wind, so the 1160 and the 1260, use the galley down. We have now lived with this galley for a while, and honestly, there is nothing wrong with it it's a very 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 functional galley it makes use of the space between essentially the fore cabin and the aft cabin in the starboard hull particularly well and to have this galley or a galley of this size in the saloon would halve its space so firstly it is a very very clever use of space and in a smaller catamaran i honestly think this is the only way to go I'm going to run through all the things that this galley contains. I mean, obviously, you know, you know what a galley should have, but there are certain questions that you have all asked on Instagram and Facebook and, and on our YouTube channel saying, okay, well, how much storage space does this 40 foot boat actually have? So let me run through all that for you. And then I'll talk to you afterwards about what we think of like the, the problems with galley up versus galley down, namely 
can you communicate? Are you a little bit isolated from the rest of your crew while cooking? So let me just start at the aft end of the galley. You've got these two kind of pretty big wardrobe cupboards here. One thing I do like about this, and you, you tend to see this on, you didn't, we didn't even get this on Ruby Rose. I do love the way that they have dedicated um, crockery storage. I think that's nice. I think it's a really lovely little feature. So this, you know, you're looking at about two foot high there and underneath there, there's another pantry. Um, again, we've just got our soup and tuna in there, <laughs> but uh, it's, they're good sized cupboards. So, I mean, that I think is a storage, you know, that's good. So all your crockery's dealt with and all your, you know, your, some of your pantry items. Three ring burner with um, pot clamps. As yet, we've been in some pretty rough season. We've never needed to use the pot clamps at all. So, um, but pot clamps are there, electronic ignition, and this, which is pretty useful, um, this opening hatch in the galley, which serves multiple purposes. Number one, it gets the heat out of the galley. Number two, if you are at sea and you've got uh, waste scraps that you want to kind of get rid of. And number three, it lets any smells out of the galley. So that's pretty nice fire blanket there and then moving forward we have a double sink double sink two full-size double sinks which again is nice um personally i would like to see covers on these but um just to give you an extra amount of galley space but i think that's not a difficult thing to retrofit you know we retrofitted it on ruby rose so two full-size sinks three faucets one hot and cold one seawater and one um filtered drinking water so that's all pretty good um underneath the cooker so there's an oven grill there there's a locker under there for a cupboard under there for your pot storage and then you've got these three full-size cupboards in here now they do they are partially restricted by the sinks but they are pretty sizable and you only lose i would say because these are quite shallow sinks i think you only lose probably about 10 centimeters about three inches of height in those cupboards so you do have full size three full size cupboards down there going on to the other side which is kind of like where all the magic happens in the kitchen <laughs> so four full size four cupboards up here again lots of storage at eye level um and then uh, microwave a lot of usable galley space over here there is this big fridge this way that over here there is this very big freezer and that's this freezer extends from about here to here and if you look at this kind of like wooden frame this is the size of the freezer obviously minus there's the probably three inches of insulation there but as a chest freezer goes it is pretty big um this would probably do us with four, four to five weeks worth of frozen food oh, um, for a crew of four crossing an ocean and if we wanted to if we if we had a vacuum bagger that would we double that um the isotherm isotherm fridge with uh, a cooler tray again this is all huge compared to what we had and then at either ends of this galley surface you have drawers one drawer for utensils the other one is for just your cutlery and then under there we've got more yet more storage so with a hatch there so an opening hatch there another big opening hatch there and this area here which is quite large and communicates i mean from here i can see the helm completely i've got complete unobstructed line of sight and the galley is narrow enough for us to be able to brace ourselves in a seaway now so overall, overall I, am, I am really happy with the galley. I, had, I have no problem with galley down. I know some people do. I said that about the Antares 44 as well, that I have no problem with the Antares 44 galley. I think it's a, that's, that's a beautiful galley. There are a couple of modifications that I would probably like to make to, to a boat like this. Some, you know, minor niggles, but there, there are only small ones. Um, as I said, I'd like to get some cover, covers for these, but essentially that's, you know, a bit of old work surface and um, a jigsaw to make some chopping boards to go in there. I think that would be really nice. Um, I would like a little bit more usable counter space. I think that unfortunately, because this, um, th this lid is quite, for the freezer is quite large, you can't put your coffee machine there. And I think that essentially, you know, I'd like to have a little coffee machine there. The microwave cupboard actually goes inside a locker um, 
and the locker doesn't really have much use so you could extend that and put a coffee machine there so the only niggle i have is that the coffee machine isn't neatly stowed away but again these are all easily workable solutions um again i, I really like the galley we've lived on this boat for a while now and um it's 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 a usable functional area it's better far it has far far more space than we had on ruby rose it has uh far more storage than we had on ruby rose and we lived on that boat for eight years without much of a gripe. So I think, you know, if you could put some little chopping boards in there, you would, you know, or at least in one of them, so that you had, you could, you know, have one sink or two sinks. I think you'd have a really, you know, pretty amazing working space because we used the chopping board on Ruby Rose a lot when, we, when it was put in place. But again, that's a simple job. Yeah, overall super happy. So on the side decks of the 1260, there are these exposed lines. Again, we've been living on this boat for a while and why they are uncomfortable on the foot, we haven't as yet found there to be any sort of tripping hazard. The simple step up to the top of the, of the coach roof actually is really, really easy to use. And there are hand, there are hand holds here, which allow you to kind of clamber up uh, in just about any weather state. You can also use the shrouds. So again, if I just whiz myself up here, it's all, non-slip so it's actually a pretty easy area to work with at five foot nine i can pretty easily get to that sail bag to kind of like open and close the sails also up here i think this is the standard version of the 1260 there are these four big solar panels so there's a lot of solar up here on this small boat again it's it's all compact the curved glass is a nice touch um, and it does allow you to look at the set of the sails um, from the helm position. So again, up here, it's a lovely day here in the Whit Sundays. But yeah, again, a nice area to work from. So let's just start first with the gas locker. It is huge. There are two gas bottles here that are regulated with a kind of like an, an electronic regulator. But the locker is huge. It will take a gen set if you want to. But again, for storage, pretty expansive. There are then further lockers, port and port and starboard just in front of the trampolines and they will take fenders and lines again you've got these hatches i would have liked to see flush hatches but again i think that you know the 1370 will have flush hatches and then you've got the trampolines the dolphin watching seats and everything else there this boat does come with cushions and those cushions form a quite a nice seating area if you are kind of like relaxing at anchor. Also because you can stow those cushions at sea, it doesn't provide any sort of like resistance, wind resistance or anything that would trap water. So again, it, for a 41 foot boat, the thing is incredibly large. It's a 41 foot boat. And if you look at obviously the profile of those holes, they are really narrow so it does cut through the waves and it points pretty well for a catamaran so overall yeah four deck nice area to sit and relax and easy to work if you're sailing it hard it's time for a conclusion about the 1260 and it can't all be positives there are certain things that we think okay we want to change those or we'd like to modify those let me just run through the positives first and I'll run on to the negatives. This is a very competent, very strong boat. Um, we have taken this out because of the time, especially in the Whit Sundays, in 30, 35 knots of wind. She takes waves like a champ. There's very little slamming. I don't think it's slammed once. Waves break perfectly happily over the bows and those fine profiles really do cut through the waves. We raced a monohull the other day at 55 degrees um, apparent. Um, and honestly, we, the, uh, we beat a 40 foot monohull hands down. That's just with the blade jib and a square top main. They were running a double reefed main as we were reefed down and a full Genoa. And honestly, we just, we, we were all over them. So performance wise, this boat is fast. We are looking at a sub 42 foot boat. So again, she's fast, she's competent, she's stable at anchor and at sea and at no point in all our time here is I, have I ever felt uncomfortable or unsafe. <clears throat> Let me run through a couple of negatives. Um, for those of you that don't like galley down, that's going to be a negative. For us, it is a very clever use of space, but I do see how, well, you know what, the galley down doesn't suit us. We want to be able to have a big kind of like 
communal area for kind of socializing all on one level. So the galley down can be something which you're like, actually I'm not keen on that. The other thing that people aren't gonna like is the helm position. Personally for us who want to do long ocean passages, yeah, the helm position is perfect. It's down low, it's secure, it's twin wheels so you can see port and starboard. And honestly, if the wind is howling, from you know and you're on a beam c you want to be uh, you want to be the lured helm so again the twin helms for us we thought it was just for docking but actually you know I, when it when it's blowing old boots you kind of want to be the, the lured side of the boat if you're in a beam c so that the, but the twin helms some people will kind of like want a higher helm some people want a central helm some but for us it works well <clears throat> point three that people are again have asked about is the visibility is the visibility as good as if you had complete sight line of sight down the side deck with no glass obstructing it no it's not is it compromised to any level that i would consider it to be either unsafe or a liability no not at all from both helm positions you can stick your head down the side deck without moving off your helm seat and get that full visibility if you need it what don't I like about this boat? It's minor, there are some very, very minor things. Firstly, this boat is utilitarian and I don't think anyone can gripe about that. She isn't designed for kind of having a beautiful and comfortable life. If you look to say other brands privilege who work very hard on their luxury, uh, exquisite, very luxurious boats, even Fontaine Pajot, they, are, they look nice inside you you go on board and you're wowed by it are you wowed by the internal look of this boat no i'm not i think that <clears throat> it's not it's not pretty on the inside because it's not designed to be pretty it's designed to be a roughy tufty australian go anywhere boat can you modify that look to make it look more homely yes you can there's a lot you can do with you know with a metrosexual way with scatter cushions and kind of like prints and plot and flowers and plants and things but you're never going to recreate that kind of lovely woody homely look that you're going to get in other boats as i've already mentioned the fact that the furniture is molded in fiberglass gives the boat strength stability and stops the squeaks but the playoff against that is that you're going to get a boat that is a little bit stark and white and you have white bulkheads and white furniture and that may not be to everybody's taste so from a downside it is not as pretty internally as you could wish it to be however you know we have seen boats that are prettier but yet they don't stand the veneers and the wood doesn't stand up to the kind of like the the long-term use that these boats here are have in charter so again i'm i probably would like a slightly prettier boat we know full well that the, the 1370 rubros 2 is going to address all those issues and be kind of in that sweet spot for kind of like livability and and kind of like beauty coupled with that util utilitarian kind of aspect that the 1260 has again <clears throat> there's not a lot that i can complain about again in our first review that we did in annapolis of this boat storage i i don't think storage is an issue if you are looking at volume and let me be quite clear here there is a lot for two people of storage space but I think that the problem comes when you're moving away from volume and looking at weight. I think that the boat is sensitive to loading and we have noticed on the two catamarans that we've had, this one and the previous one, the other 1260 was heavier. I can't tell you exactly how much heavier it was, but this one here performs substantially better. And I think this boat only has Dacron uh, sails on and the other one had laminate sails. And we've been out in very wind conditions so there is a diff there is notable um kind of like sensitivity to weight so if you were a family of four trying to go around the world and you needed to put all your bits on board and you were downscaling from a house and you wanted say for instance a blender and a decent coffee machine and you wanted all the toys and the canoes and the paddle boards <clears throat> very slowly you would weight the boat down and you would find that it did become set performance sensitive however in conclusion for people that know their boats, for aficionados of sailing, a couple or a couple small family who want to sail around the world in comfort, I can't think of a better boat except for maybe the 1370. But 
bear in mind all the boats I've discussed in this kind of like conclusion, the exquisite, the higher end Fontaine Pajos, the privileges, they are all twice as expensive as this boat. So when you're looking at cost, this boat is cheap compared to those boats. So again, whether you're looking at a used 1260, a used 1250, because a lot of those are on the market, 1160s, these are really good value for money. And I think I'd have far less concern about circumnavigating in this than I would in another production catamaran. So that concludes um, an in-depth review. Sorry it's gone on a little bit, but I really wanted to bring you all the aspects of this boat that we have found have to be maybe useful to you as a potential buyer. Is it perfect? No, no boat is perfect. Is this the boat to kind of sit in marinas and wow your friends with the beauty of it? No, it's not. Is this the boat to take you around the world in comfort at a price point that is achievable maybe five years earlier than waiting to save for your big retirement boat? Absolutely. Do I recommend this? Absolutely I do. So I hope you enjoyed that, an in-depth review of the Seawind 1260. Please feel free to leave a comment down below if you've sailed a 1260, if you plan to sail a 1260, a 1250 or the 1100 series, if you are lucky enough to own a 1600 or if you're one of the prospective 1370 owners like us who um, have something to say about the 1260. So I hope you enjoyed that. We'll be back again soon with more regular episodes. Goodbye. Cross my heart and hope to die